But if you ever want to build anything that is actually used by people, this is not going to cut it. Um, if you ever want to build things that are actually used by even just yourself long term, or if you want to start up like a solo SaaS, or if you want to start doing freelance development for somebody, or if you're a product manager or something that wants to build an internal tool for your team to use, you need to know the basics of coding at least so that you can create stuff like this. Now, I'm not denying AI's ability to help make it so that we can create things without having to write the actual code. That's usually what I do. I strongly do believe that developers' roles are kind of transitioning into more of a code reviewer type of role where we're telling the AI what to do, we're reviewing the code, and then having it make changes based on that. But the crucial step there is that you still need to review the code and you still need to understand what it is doing under the hood. And so I want to offer a little bit of a different approach here for anybody that wants to get into vibe coding, that wants to start building things using these AI tools because they are incredible. And they can literally tend to maybe 100x our productivity and how quickly we're able to output things. Like Even this, what I built here, like, yes, I know how to code and I could have built this, but it took me two minutes instead of taking, you know, a couple hours or whatever. And so the tools are amazing, but they should not serve as a replacement for knowing how to code. So if you do want to build things that are actually useful, that actually work, that actually could be made into like production level applications, then that's what this video is kind of designed to, to cover uh, briefly. So a couple different approaches we can take to vibe coding or AI powered coding or whatever you want to call it. 